Again, uh, let, let me show you here in Second Peter uh, 1 that it's, everything's already done and we're going to change our vocabulary to one of success in Christ. Second Peter 1, Second Peter 1, it says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained, see, past tense, see there, it's past tense. You don't have to ask God to give you precious faith. He already did it. Say, he already gave it to me. Watch what he says. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. According to his divine power has what? So it's past tense, huh? So you don't have to ask God for some divine power. Why? He's already given it to you. Okay? He has already given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us past tense. Called us means called us, chosen us. Okay? Now, so here is, we know that in John chapter 8, verse 32, it says, the truth will set you free. Well, that's partially true. Because it is the truth, the truth that will make you free but it's the truth that you know about and act upon. The truth that you know and act upon will set you free. You can be in church all your life and hear truth and not know what the truth is. That's why we're going in levels, huh? We're going in stages. You remember when we went to school, we were in the kindergarten, first grade, second grade. We knew some stuff, huh? But then when we got to the sixth grade, we said, we didn't know this. Yet we were in the same building. Do you see that? But yet after that, there was the eighth and ninth grade. It was still school, but it was a different level. Yeah. Then you got to the twelfth grade and you said, wow. Then you went to college for those of us that went. See, it's still knowledge, but it's a higher level of knowledge. So, so, so the Bible says that uh, uh, at one time, you know, we were babies, but now we're grown up, so we need to act like grown up. But we can't act with, like grown-up if they don't teach us how a grown-up is supposed to act. So we're, I'm relating that to the Bible, that uh, the truth that you know and, and act upon, it'll make you free. Now, 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 follow me closely, because you have people, listen very careful, who go to ministers and ask them, pray for me that God will bless me. Uh, see, it, he can't do that if he really knows if this minister is really mature and understanding because God has already, according to what we just read, he's already blessed us. But then you have to get the definition of what the word blessed means. It's not a salutation as some, as some Christians say, be blessed, we bless you. That's not what it means. The word blessed is, 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 is the word empowered to prosper and reproduce in every area of life. See, the word, pro, the word blessed is the is the Hebrew, is is the Greek word e u l o g i a eulogia? That's where we get the word from. Where, where it says uh, when we go and we give uh, a eulogy uh, at a funeral, you know, or, or we're speaking well. So you eulogia means uh, God speaks well of us. So God has blessed us by speaking well of us. You're more than a conqueror. You're blessed in the city, blessed in the field. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. See, another word, uh, that, another word of that is, um, it, it, it's another word, and I'll get to that later on, but I want you to get the word blessed means God has, been, has, has spoken well of you, and God has empowered you. You don't need to call upon God to, Lord, Lord, send the power just now. He's already done it. I said, say it, he's already done it. See, God has blessed you, what? From eternity past. God blessed you from eternity past. You and I are blessed right now, right at this moment, you are blessed. May not understand it, may not look like that, but see, in order for you and I to be successful in any endeavor in the five sense realm, for you can see, feel, touch, taste, or hear, in order to get the manifestation of it, where it manifests what God has said about you and I, you have to be successful inside 
before you can be successful outside. If we're not careful, we get into motivational uh, uh, speaking, motivational teacher, uh, cheerleading, and, and that only lasts us while you're there. But you see, we brought God with us. That's why you'll never hear me say, Lord, be with us in the service. That's ignorance gone to seed. Lord, I, I, I want you to be with us. See, that, that right away is a key that that person doesn't understand that God's already done it. He, he's already done it. Now, we're going somewhere with this because, see, what happens, why are people not saying that? Because they haven't got the revelation. They're hearing the word, but they don't have the revelation. And what is revelation? Revelation means to uncover, to unveil. To uncover, to unveil would be like if there was a big curtain here and the, there's a person behind speaking and saying all these, saying God is with you, God is for us, and all these blessings are here. See, he's seeing them, but we're not. So we come for a year, two years. He said, all this belongs to you, but he's seeing them, we're not. But one day we come in, he said, and he pulls the curtain. He said, all this is yours. He said, whoa. See, that's revelation. It's when we get an unveiling of what he's already done. We'll change our vocabulary. We'll change our thinking. And we'll change our receiving. And we'll change our living. You can come in church all the time. And, and hear a good teaching. But never get the unveiling of it. And that's why people choose their services. Well, who's teaching today? I'm not going. See, now you're, see, the, what the world, they're doing it like watching movie stars. And we have to get away from that. Come expecting, and the Holy Ghost will teach you. In other words, growing up, huh? Now, now in Deuteronomy 30, 19, uh, we see this where, where God speaks to Moses, and he says, choose you this day. So, choose you this day, blessing or cursing. See? So, uh, de life or death. So what's he telling you and I right now this moment? He said, this means you, you or me or any other person here has to choose to believe that what is written in the Bible is truth. It, 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 it's, it's the living word of God in 2 Timothy 3.16. I need you to go with me there. That's another thing I want to get, get this church back to get to reading their Bibles while I'm teaching Instead of, you know, just sitting there. And I understand you got your iPads and your, your phone. Okay, but use them, okay? Yeah, yeah, use them. Because you said, the Bible said, keep the word before your eyes. So we got to do that, huh? Because a lot of times, I, I learned this from Dad, we can quote. But see, God doesn't want you quoting. He wants you looking at it. Because you're going to see something that you didn't see before. So here in, in 2 Timothy 3.16, oh, I love it. I love this word so much. He said, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now that word there, inspiration, means the breath of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. So every scripture you read, that's God breathing on you. That's the breath of God. God breathed on this word. I said, God breath is on this word. God's life is in this word. So, so, so we have to get a revelation of this. Now, because of, I, I said what's written in the Bible is truth, it's the breath of God. And again, let me say this again. Again, every one of us here has freedom to choose to believe or not to believe. What? That God has already blessed you. I can't make you. God can't make you. You have to believe that God says you're blessed. And then you're going to have to choose to say to, to agree with him, I'm blessed. See, that God has already blessed us with all blessing. Say that, God has already blessed me with all blessing. So we're not trying to get blessed. Okay? It's going to take time to get this. And, and, and so it's going to take time, but we can get there. It's going to take time for you to say, Lord, Thank you for blessing me. Your prayer life will change where you're not going to longer say, Lord, you need to bless me or else. 
It's going to be an unveiling. I said it's going to be an unveiling. God has already blessed us from eternity past. So we're coming from a victory, in a victory, to a victory. Because Jesus is the victory. See, you didn't get saved on a certain day. That's when you find out what he did from eternity past. Do you see that? See, all this must become a revelation and unveiling to a person. All, all that I'm going to be teaching, well, the whole Bible, really. And, and no one can make a person believe it, even though it's so anyway. It, 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 it's so anyway whether a person believes it or not. But it's to their advantage to believe it. Do you see that? So this is different. I mean, we're, we're, in other words, God is saying, uh, I'm taking you from high school to college. See, it, it, nothing new. It's been, there's men and churches that have entered into this years, hundreds of years ago. Still happening. But, but it's our turn. I said it's our turn. Yeah. It, it, it's a different level. It, it's a different depth. It's a revelation of what God has already done and, and that will change you and I forever. Really, this teaching is going to ruin you. Oh, yeah, it, it's going to ruin you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You say, what does that mean? You, you get it. When, when, when you're ruined, you get it. I, say, I, I, I got it, Pastor. See, there's some, type, there's some stuff you got to get on your own, you know, because Romans 8.14 says, Romans 8.14 says, as many as are led by my spirit, they are the sons of God. That word son there is the Greek word huios, H-U-I-O-S, H-U-I-O-S. That scripture there, Romans 8.14, speaks of maturity. God is not handing out mandates to children. We start out as children, but we don't stay as children. We need to grow up. I don't mind me going up because then I'm going to get some promotion. I'm going to, God's going to tell me to go places where I've never been, but he's going with me. Now, and let me say this to you, that being led means you're a son. I heard people sing the song, I've decided to follow Jesus. I've got some good news for you, uh, and you might, you might like it, you might get upset, but it's so anyway, you can't follow Jesus just because you want to. I tried that. I tried to follow Jesus just because I saw, heard the song. I decided to follow Jesus, and on the way to do it, uh, I got upset. I wanted to cuss people out. Got mad at pastors and churches. Got mad at prophets and apostles because all this stuff was hindering me. You can't just follow Jesus because you want to. A lot of people quit after singing that song because they couldn't handle what came against them the trying of their faith. Now, so we, we must learn about how that we're already blessed. And we can't, we can't start, uh, and, and unless, if we don't understand that we're already blessed, we'll never live the blessed life. That, that our God, that our Father God speaks of us in the book of Ephesians. I, I, I condensed the teaching in Bible school uh, uh, because at first we, we, I taught it about 18 weeks and then God said, condense it. And, and really, that was the condensation of the book of Ephesians anyway. Because it would take me, if I was going to teach Ephesians in Bible school, it would take me six months just to teach the foundation of Ephesians. There's only one book that's more deep than the book of Ephesians, the book of Colossians. See, that's meat. That's five-star restaurant. That's not eating at the border. That's not going to McDonald's. Those places you don't eat, you swallow. And, and those places, they're, they're, they're not cooks. You go to a five-star five restaurant, you don't have cooks, you got chefs. And, and, and bring you five courses before you bring you the real stuff. And when you go to a restaurant to eat and you order a steak, please don't order A1 steak sauce. That tells you that you've never been to a five-star restaurant. Why would you ruin a steak that's been cooked by a chef? Huh? 
See, God wants to serve us some five-star revelation, but we'll mess it up by ordering A1 steak sauce and put it on there and say, I don't believe that. You're ordering, you're ordering some A1 steak sauce. Five-star restaurants, the lights go down low, but the prices go up. Huh? And then you got some nice music. Nice music. And you're tasting the food, you're not swallowing it. You taste it. And you say, this is good. And you don't have to holler loud to hear what you're saying because the music's loud and people are loud all over. And you're sitting in the captain's chair. Not in some booth all tight. <laughs> I'm saying that to say this, that God is going to change your way of living through the word of God. If you submit. So, so we don't have to uh, always seek God to do something. That's people are saying, God do something, God do something. And I said, I've been, they say, I've been pleading with God to do something. God has not made us beggars, but children. Kings and priests. So you don't need to go and, and, and beg God. Just walk in to the throne. Don't believe those songs. Let's bombard the gates of heaven. I don't know why they're wide open. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace. You don't have to body slam your gate to get in. Don't bombard the gates of heaven. Just walk in. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Hallelujah. See, see, well, so we got to get us some, 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 we got to get rid of some religious cults. And we'll do it knowing that he's already done it. We hear so much Christians speak in future tense instead of now. Now God. Now faith is. See, they're speaking future tense, but they're not speaking what God has already done. What God has already done. See, the one that straightened my act out was Dr. Hagen in Bible school. He straightened my whole vocabulary out. It didn't mean that I got it when I was in Bible school. When I got out of Bible school, I still messed up. Five, six years later, I was still, you know, in the fog, you know. But I kept at it, and I'm still, I didn't say I reached the zenith of it, but my vocabulary has changed. I don't allow vocabulary around me. I can't stop it, but I'm not listening to them. And sometimes people think I'm arrogant because they're talking foolish stuff, and I'm, 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 I'm thinking of my gold, my vision, I'm thinking of what God has given to me. And people are, all, they're, they're grown up, 30, 35 years old, but they act like, you know, they're only six and eight years old. They're giggling, and, and nothing wrong with giggling. But see, you don't giggle all your life. Giggling is not going to get you your bills paid. It's an unveiling of what, who you are, who God is, and what he's done for you, not what he's doing for you. See, not what he's doing, it's what he's done. It's, it should be what we are doing, what he's done. It's what we're doing, what he's already done. What am I doing with what God has already done? See? So, so not, not all the people do that. Not all the people do it all the time. But, see, most of the time, they're speaking, what is God going to do? Not what he's already done. See? I wonder what God's going to do. Read the Bible. He's already done it. See, if you can get into a problem that God didn't know about, we got a problem. See, we may get caught by surprise, but not God. I said, not God. So, so we as Christians, God's own children, but blood-bought children, God's family that's in this wonderful covenant. We need not seek victory, but rather enforce it. Don't seek victory. Enforce it. I'm going to say it again. I, I See, I... I'm not trying to get you a whole bunch of information. I'm just trying to get an unveiling. Don't seek victory. Enforce it. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Enforce the victory that has already been purchased through Jesus Christ. Enforce the victory that has already been purchased through Jesus Christ. Because we are present tense. More than conquers through Christ Jesus. So I'm not asking God to make me more than a conqueror. I already am. Oh, 
See, well, yeah, but the Pastor Rodriguez, the Bible said ask. Yeah, but that's in the Gospels. That everybody was spiritually dead there. You get over there to the New Testament epistle, that's for living creatures, you and I. See, when you find out what you got, you don't need to ask, you just take it. The Gospel of John chapter 14 Verses 13 and 14, Jesus said, In that day you shall ask me nothing. But whatsoever you do, you shall ask in my name, and my Father will give it to you. Notice that's not praying. He said, In that day you ask in my name. In other words, you put a demand on my name or the power, the ability that's in my name, and my Father will give it to you because you use my name. You're not praying. You're not praying. You're not praying. You're putting a demand. You're not commanding, demanding Jesus or God, the Father, or the Holy Spirit. You're putting a demand on the power. It's the power of attorney. A man leaves the country and he says, I'm leaving, but you're in charge of the corporation and I'm giving you the power of attorney. And he's got a letter. So he goes to that place. Okay, we need to do this and do that. Then people said, no, we, 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 he's not here. No, no, no. Here it is. I got the power of attorney. So I'm not going to sit down and talk to you for an hour on what to do. I already gave you instructions. And, I, and I, I'm going to do what that man does. He, he goes about his business. He's in the office. He's not looking over your shoulder every 20, 10 minutes. Why? You already know what to do. Go do it. Jesus said, I'm giving you my name. The authority that's a name, put a demand on it, and when you put present that name to my father, he'll do it for you. See, there's nothing saying there about prayer. Not a thing about prayer. Not a thing about prayer there. Progressive revelation. Those people, he did say, ask, seek, and knock. But that was back there. You see, that was back there when there, there were no new creatures in Christ. New Testament, new creatures in Christ, we go to school, we get the Holy Spirit in us. And they'll tell you, you don't need to ask for something that's yours. He, asked, he told us in 2 Peter 1, 3, I've given you all things, all things, all things. Oh, yeah, that's spiritual thing. You're not just spiritual. You're not just spiritual. So, so it's not just spiritual things. It's all, all things. As far as I know, all means all. Greek and the Hebrew, whatever, it's, it's all. It's all. Yeah. It, it, yeah. And, and so what happens in Romans 12, verse 2, it says, let, let's read it, because I want to get us get a copy to start reading the Bible again. Romans 12, and verse 2. Turn to your iPad, your phone, whatever. Turn to it there. Your, your, your phone's going to get saved. <laughs> your phone's going to say, what mean of this? Romans 12. <laughs> he says here, verse 2, it said, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why do I got to renew my mind, Lord? So you can prove, prove what? What is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? That you can prove it. Not your pastor. Not your neighbor. You. You can prove it. Yeah, prove, prove it. Now, so we got to get rid of our stinking thinking. What do you mean? Get rid of a poverty mentality. And start believing that we're already blessed. And start acting like we're blessed, speaking like we're already blessed. Okay? And, and as we do this, then we can reach out and appropriate or take what God has already blessed us with. Not asking me to, I'm not asking you to bless me, Lord. I'm going to take what you bless me with. I didn't come to church to get blessed. I came to church to find out about more of my blessing. What belongs to me. Because if I say I'm coming to church to get blessed, then you need to get born again. If you're coming to church to get blessed, then you need to get born again. You need to come up here and leave and lead you to Jesus. Except Jesus is your Lord and Savior. And right there, you're blessed now. You'll never have to go 
to the Holy Land to get blessed. It's okay to go blessed to the Holy Land. You see what I'm saying? You don't have to get on a jet and go someplace to get blessed. Because we're growing up, we say, oh, I went and I got blessed. No, you were the blessed that went there to find out about the blessing you already blessed you with. Huh? I let that sink in. That was a torpedo. Shh. Boom. Sometimes God has to do this. See? And, and, and so we, his blood-bought children, are blessed. And, and as we think in line with God's word, as we think by the leading of the Holy Spirit, we will quit this legalistic mindset and we're not going to come under condemnation or legalism. In this unworthy attitude, I'm just a worm. No, you're not a worm. You're a king priest. Blood bought, blood washed. I'm just a worm. I don't have anything. Stinking, thinking. Uh-uh. God created. Look, look, look how much God loved us. He created the universe. All the planets. Everything, animals, everything. He said, let's build all this. And then he, then he created, see, Adam and Eve. See, Adam and Eve were created, we were born. There's a difference between creation and being born. We were born, they were created. Are you, are you seeing this? Okay, so then God created the universe, then, we were, then he created Adam and Eve and said, here, this is all yours. I made it for you. The, the universe is yours. The stars, the moon, all that is for you to get entertained. The sun's for you to get heat. The water's for you to drink and go swimming. Huh? So he thought of you and me, and then we got born, and he says, oh, yeah, the same thing that Adam and Eve have, it's all yours here. Don't ask me for it. It's already yours. And we asked for a little piece of land. Just, you know, a little log cabin over there in the corner. There ain't no log cabins in heaven. There's mansions. We got to get out of this mentality. I don't need much. You're selfish. I don't need all that. You're selfish. Why? Okay, you don't need all that. Fine. But take all that and give it to some people. So you don't need all that, but some people do. They don't have a house. They don't have nothing to eat. They don't have a car. Then give it to them. So you don't need all that. They do. That's why God wants us to get this unveiling so we can help people. Huh? We'll get rid of this mindset, you know, uh, uh, Lord, Father, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, I know you can do this, but will you do it? I, I know you can do it, but will you do it? No, he already did it. Lord, I, I know you can do it, but will you do it? He said, no, no, I already did it. You sounded good, but, but you see, that's, that's not the vocabulary of success. That's that earth talk, Michigan talk, Saginaw, Birch Run, Flint, Detroit talk. We need to talk heaven talk of what he's already done. He likes that. I said, God likes that. He likes to hear how we're honoring his word. Yeah, but God... <laughs> We've got to allow God to open this to us. Uh, yeah. Because you'll never be the same ever, ever, ever. You've got to let this teaching ruin you. What do you mean ruin you? you? You get it by the time we get you. Know, you leave this planet, you get it. Because this, what the Bible will radically change you. It's doing this to me more and more and more and more. And more and more. Daily. Daily. Hebrews 11, 6. Let's go there. I bet you ain't never saw the Bible so much as you've seen it today. I know you carried it with you, but you know it's, but you ain't never, you ain't never read so much scripture like today. You'd be a, you can be a, a scholar before you leave here. He, Hebrews 11, 6 says, but without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, underline the word is, and that he is, again, underline that, 
a, a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You have to believe that God is present tense. Not going to be. Not was. He wasn't the great I am. He's not going to be the great I am. He is the great I am. See? So, 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 so not was. So I got to believe that God has blessed me. So, so I'm blessed present tense right now. Right now, I'm blessed. If I'm not blessed present tense right now, then God lied. Then God lied in 2 Peter 1.3. And if God lied in 2 Peter 1, 3, he might have lied in John 3, 16. And it makes a whole lot of difference because, wait a minute, where might I, where might I go, to heaven or hell? See? See? No, I got to quit. Uh, I got to enjoy what God has done for me. Huh? I must quit. I, was, I must quit working to try to get it, just enjoy and get it through the knowledge of him. I got to enjoy what God has done for me. Why should I work? I got to walk towards it, not work towards it. Why? Why work for it when he's already blessed me? Present tense, present tense. I don't have to do some actions so I can get God to bless me. I'm going to do this. I'm going to read 16 chapters all this week. Well, go ahead and read them. It's good for you, but he already blessed you whether you read or not. Do you see that? I, I'm going to make a commitment. I'm going to do this, you know. I, 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 I'm going to pray three hours every day and increase it. And I'm going to pray at least 60 hours this, this, this month. That's okay. It's good to do it. But see, whether you prayed or not, he already did it. You're praying because of what he did, not to get him to get to doing. You're not praying to get God to do something. You didn't come to church to get God to do something. He already did it. We have intercessory prayer, but I don't come here in intercessory prayer. I mean, we, you know, we don't come to prayer on Sundays to get God to do something. I come and thank you for what he's already done. It's fun. I said, it's fun. We've been coming now for quite a few months. I've never come and asked God to do anything. Why? He already did it. He already did it. And I don't have to come to a building to get him to do something. Just ask him at home. There's no distance in the spirit. Why ain't there no distance in the spirit? Because he's in you. You're not in a building. He's not in Chicago, Atlanta. Huh? He's in you. Talk to him. Huh? Talk to him. We do like, oh, Lord. Oh, he's just in here. That's the ceiling. He's in here. Talk to him. To look up is to look in. That'll get you tomorrow night. So I have to enjoy what God's done for me. Now, I want you to write this word down, desperate, desperate. Desperate, it, it, it talks about, it, it's a word that means uh, hopeless. Desperate means hopeless, critical, critical time, grave. It's a grave time. It, it, it means reckless, violent, despair. Taking any risk. That's just some of it, you know. I won't go on because I don't want to get down because I'm going to stay up. <laughs> now, you, you, now, see, in other words, now there, there's a good definition of desperate. And that's fine. But if it's a wrong definition of desperate, then it's going to have a bad ending to it and a, and, and a bad result from it. Because what the Bible says, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Get that little book from Dr. Hagen about in him. That'll correct your thinking, mine, yours. Christ in us, the hope of glory right now. So Christ is in me, the hope of glory right now. So we're going from glory to glory, okay? Follow me closely. The glory's in you. Uh, you see, the glory's in you. So then... It, because the glory is in me. And I'm going to give you the, the two definitions of desperate. Because if you don't have the right definition, then it's, it'll go wrong. If, because, not if, because Christ in me, the hope of glory, then why am I desperate? Huh? 
why am I desperate? Because why am I desperate for God and things to make it? Why is a Christian desperate? It's because they don't understand that God has already blessed them. That's why they're desperate. For God, for things, they're desperate. And, and, and see, it's because they don't understand, I'm already blessed. I can't be blessed and desperate. Huh? I can't be blessed and afraid. I, I can't be desperate and grave, hopeless. Now watch me, watch closely. See, I got to know, the reason I'm not going to be desperate because I know my position in Christ. In Christ. It, 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 see, if not, then I'll be desperate. I'll be in despair because I don't know my position in Christ. Now, again, hopelessness. No, Christ in me, the hope of glory. So how can I be hopeless? It's a person that goes to college. They get there. And they're there maybe uh, two or three weeks. I can't make it. I don't know what to do. I I'll never pass these tests. Well, wait a minute. You just got there. There's people that will help you. There's mentors. And, and there's people that, can, that, that pass those tests, that finish college already. There, there, there's, there's libraries. See? You can go get some extra teaching. Huh? Do you see that? And they'll help you, calm you down. We say, oh, yeah, I'll make it. So when a person said, I'm hopeless, then what happened to Christ in me, the hope of glory? Hmm? We're not hopeless. We got God in us. Amen. Huh? Right. See, because see, the, that person that went to college, there's libraries there to find out on the subject. See? Personal trainers. Christians who have a revelation of that God has already blessed them and who know See, I'm blessed, you know, but I also know this. I'm not immune from the test of life. I know I'm blessed. I know God has blessed me, but not, I'm not immune that a test will come tomorrow, tonight. But also I have an unveiling of what God has blessed me with. What? He told me there, he said, Paul said it. He said, my God shall supply all your need at the time of a test and a trial or a shortage or a lack coming to you. So see this, this stuff that came at me? My God's going to supply whatever I need to come against what's coming against me. And because of the supply, then I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I don't like the test. I don't like the lack. I don't like the pain. But my God will supply. And through that supply, I can do all things. I'm not going to start begging. I'm not going to quit. Blame it on the church, the pastor. <laughs> Do you see that? No, 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 no. I, I got the supply. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See? Do you see that? So I'm, I'm not absolutely hopeless. Say, I'm not absolutely hopeless. See, if you use the wrong word for hunger, there's, there's a different word for hunger. And that's good. There's a good word. I'm hungry. I hungry means you desire something. Huh? See, in America, we don't know. We don't know what it means. To, we're hungry. We're hungry. No, you're not. You're not hungry. Come on. No, you're not hungry. You want to go out to the restaurant and eat, but you're not hungry. Because when you get there, you say, "What do you want?" I don't know. I thought you were hungry. Man, if you're hungry, man, they bring the butter. You eat the butter before they ain't even got the bread yet. You eating the butter, so you're not hungry. People in other countries, they're hungry. We don't know what hunger is. See, so there's a different connotation of the hunger I desire. That's good. I, I desire, but I'm not hungry. That, that's a good one. In other words, Lord, I love you. See, you're, you're desiring to be with him. I want to do anything you want me to do. See, that's a hunger. That's a desire. That's good. But the word hunger also means pain, agony. Huh? In other words, it's a pain that people are going through because they're not getting their needs met. Right? So, so they're saying, what they're really saying, I'm desperate. I don't have this. I don't have the money. 
See, I don't have the clothes. I don't have the job. I don't have enough finances coming in, all, even though I got a job. They're not hungry. They're desperate. I believe when people are singing those songs, uh, and you probably heard it, I'm desperate for you, Lord. They really don't know what they're singing. Some of them do. Lord, I'm desperate for you. I hunger for you. That's a nice song. Really, it's a beautiful song. But, but what are you saying? Lord, I'm in pain for you. I'm in despair and agony. I'm hurting. I'm begging you, Lord. You don't do nothing. If you don't interfere, Lord, intervene, uh, I, I'm going to lose it. You got to, wait a minute. I already intervened on the cross. I already intervened. I don't need to intervene. Lord, if you don't intervene, this person's going to die. I intervened before the foundation of the world. If you don't intervene, Lord, we're going to lose our car. I did that. Second Peter 1 3. What are you doing talking about you losing your car? He should be saying, Lord, I'm so blessed. You're going to give me some revelation, your understanding. There's no way I can lose this car. I can't lose this house. I can't foreclose on that house. I'm blessed. How can somebody be blessed go through foreclosure? How oh, glory to God. Say, he's good to me. And that's why they sing that song. That's why they say, oh, Lord, you've got to move. No, no, you move. I moved 2,000 years ago. And then we have to be real careful with this confession stuff. We think that confession moves God. Confession don't move God because God is not stuck. It, it, no, 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 God's not stuck. We think, we think our believing and saying, I believe what I say, I believe what I say, I believe what I say. I, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, mine is mine. Thank you, Lord. No, no, no. That's, that, that's not God. That's not confession. See, if, when I, if I believe something in the scripture, the word confess means to agree with, to say the same thing as. So, so if God says, by my stripes you were healed, see, that's because I got a revelation of it. That's because I, I've got a revelation and unveiling. I got into my spirit. So I said, okay, Lord, you know, by your stripes I'm healed. That's it. And thank him. I don't have to say for three hours, Lord, I believe I received. Thank you, Lord. By your stripes I was healed. 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 By your stripes, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. By your stripes I was healed. See, so you don't have an unveiling, so that's why they're saying that. I, I love Eva. She, she knows that. She's got a revelation. But I don't have to go around all day long. Eva, I love you, I love you, I love you. Eva, Eva, I love you, I love you, I love you. She's eating, I love you, I love you, Eva. Eva, I love you. We're in the car. Eva, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. See, that's not confessing. And we wonder why we're not getting our needs met. And God's not mad at us. He's not upset at us. He just looks at Jesus and smiles. And Jesus said, I saved her? Jesus. Wow. No, we got to do something before it's too late. About, Lord, if you don't move. No, you move. I'm hungry for God. I'm desperate for Jesus. What do you want to do that for? Yeah. I remember one man did that. Oh, I said, ooh, Lord Jesus. And it was packed out. And all the faith people were there, all the word of faith people were there, all these, you know, scholars. And he got up and he said this. He said, he said, he said, everybody in this room, if you're hungry and thirsting for the Lord, stand up. They all stood up. He said, I don't know what for. He said, let's go there, let's go to the scriptures where you get mad at me. I ain't no hungry for Jesus, no way. Uh -uh. I'm not thirsty either. Lord Jesus, that person just gave himself away. I'm thirsty for the Lord. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Huh? Yeah, John chapter 6, verse 34 through 35. Then they said unto him, <laughs> Oh, Lord Jesus. Hmm? Evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never what? What is saved, buddy? Never hunger? And what else? He that believe on me shall never what? I'm so thirsty for the Lord. What did it say there? Huh? Oh, I'm hungry. Oh, you sound good, but that's not good. 
You sound really nice. But don't, don't say no more because you're getting deep in their frustration. John chapter 4. Look, look what he said to the lady at the well of Samaria. Oh, Jesus. He said, Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him in the well of water shall spring to everlasting life. Do you see that? Those people all stood up in unison. Yeah. Word people. I don't know what word, but it sure wasn't the word of God. So what I'm saying, I, in other words, I'm desiring the things of God. Because we're ever always learning. But to be hungry? What the man say? You'll never hunger. What the man said, you'll never thirst. What I'm saying, I'm desiring you, God. But I'm not desperate for you. See, you got to get to where you're, you're, you're hungry for the things of God. The things of God. Desiring for the things of God. Huh? See, I, I desire, I, would, I desire a real nice home with a sauna inside, swimming pool inside. See, I desire, but I'm not desperate for it. I'm not in pain because of it. Do you see that? There's a difference. You know, I desire to be in a real nice, uh, right now, <laughs> to get on, a, on, a, on my own jet, you know, and, and go to a nice warm time. I desire, but I'm not in pain over it. I'm not over there in the emergency. What's wrong with you? <laughs> because I, I need a jet. <laughs> I want to be where it's warm and I'm in agony. I'm desperate. I'm in despair. No, you need a straight jacket. A white one. Huh? See what I mean? See, this teaching is going to ruin you. You got to stay focused. And see God with all your spirit, not your head. With your heart. Because many people are trying to be successful outside when they're not successful inside. You've got to be a millionaire in here before you're a millionaire outside. I said, you've got to be a millionaire in here before you're a millionaire outside. Go to Jeremiah, please. Jeremiah 29. Are you, are you getting anything out of this? Ah, thank you, Lord. He, see, he's promoting us. Aren't you glad? Ooh, glory to God. Just get some brand new notebooks, no more kindergarten, no more first grade. Huh? Just get, this is grown up notebooks. Glory to God. <laughs> Champions, glory to God. King priest. Woo! Royal priest. Royal king priest. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, we, 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 we should, you know, get this growing up and developing in this. We'll take our time, you know, but I tell you what, there'll be time we say, you know, I'm going to ask for testimony, and that's all it's going to be, just an hour of testimony. Yeah. Huh? Because yeah. it works. Yeah. Aren't you glad it works? Yeah. I, I say, aren't you glad it works? Yeah. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, glory to God. For I know the thoughts that I think for you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me. He's not lost. When you search me with all your heart. Huh? Yeah. I'm looking for the Lord. He's inside. Do you see that? I, I, you know, and we hear this. Lord, uh, be with us in our service. He said, I never left you. I was with you when you were sleeping last night. When you were brushing your teeth off with you, I got in the car with you. And then you hear people say, I didn't feel God in that place at all. He was nowhere around. Then you, you, you need to get saved. Because, see, see, you had God had to be there. If you're born again, you took him in there. See, because he got this feeling stuff. Oh, I, I feel the Holy Ghost. I know it's the Holy Ghost. How do you know? See those goosebumps? That's not the Holy Ghost. Oh, that's the Holy Ghost. No, it's not. That's your arm with goosebumps on it. That ain't the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a person. That's your body reacting to the Holy Ghost in you. See? Do you see that? I know you do. See, in other words, 
that, 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 that it's a good desire when you desire, I desire you, Lord. I'm hungry, I'm hungry. That's a good one. But to say, Lord, I'm so dry. What? I, I'm so empty, I'm downcast, I'm just a worm. I'm desperate for you. I'm sitting here barefooted in the snow. Wow. I don't know why. Haven't you read that I prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemy? And that's, not a, that's not a heavenly table. That's an earthly table because there's no enemies in heaven. He said, I prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. What are the enemies? Doubt, unbelief, religious teaching, fear. Those are enemies. Huh? In the presence, eat. It's your table. I'm not going to spoon feed you. Go up and eat. Just, just take it. What's in there? Healing. Prosperity. Ooh, prophecy. Word of knowledge. Word of wisdom. Long life. Glory to God. It's a table. It's prepared already. Isn't it wonderful? We don't have to prepare it. <laughs> Glory to God. Huh? If a Christian is desperate in the wrong sense, hungry in the wrong sense, and dry, it is not, it's absolutely not God's fault. That's an insult in the nostrils of God. No. You, you go to those places, I've been there, where, where you, know, you pay one time and eat all you can eat. You just eat all you can eat. See, in those places, you pay once, and you go over there. Now, when you go again, you don't go pay again. This is my second serving, so here again. No, they look at you. You're strange. You already pay for it. As many times you go up there, it's okay. Do you see that? Why? It's already paid for. God said, I already paid for it. Eat. It's already paid for. I picked up the tab. I said, I'll drink to that. And eat to that. Huh? Are you, are you seeing this? Don't wait a God. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start eating and eating and drinking and never stop. Eat, drink, and be merry. Ah, don't wait a God, huh? Yeah. And, and then what do we do? Go home and take a nap happy and full. They'd be home and... <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. to God, huh? Yeah. You'd be eating and eating at that place and, man, deserve everything, just anything. You just fill it up. Then you go home. Why? They already paid for it. You already paid for it. And then we say, if we could, give me a box for the dog. You yeah, know, you know, it's for you. How about a doggy bag? Doggy bag, nothing. That's you. Ribs and all that for your dog. You're lying. You're lying for you. It's my doggy. <laughs> oh, did you get anything out of this? Me too. I said me too. You see where God wants to take us to another level. That's all. See, there are no perfect people in this, in here or any other place. Only God is perfect. His word is perfect. And see, God won't make us do anything. He won't, he won't make us. Why? God's so wonderful that he gave us a will. And we're not puppets. And that's why we see things happening to God's people, his Christians, that they're not making it because he can't make them. Can't do nothing. God will allow any people, any person, to go with holes in their shoes, the cupboards bare. He'll, allow, he'll put his angels back and allow, and, and, and let, allow those people to go to straight to hell. He'll allow people, babies, children.